And I'm looking at dudes like, come on, man, you, 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 mm -hmm. know, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I don't even know you and I got to fight you. You know what I'm saying? So that's a different type of beast in itself. Like, you fighting dudes you don't even know. It's dudes right. that's getting, they got down with gangs in jail for protection where this is my culture and Swakim. Mouse, man. You got them all, man. When they see you down, there's no Hey everybody, welcome to the Bounce Back Podcast. I'm your host, B. Luke. I got a very special guest with me today. This interview is hard to get. Not everybody gets it besides me and NPR, man. So you had an interesting enough story to get on NPR. Yeah, so sure. why don't you, mom, just tell the people who you are, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself. You know, my oldest name, Supercut. The people know me, Chop Low Beast, all the same thing. Jamal, you know what I'm saying, you, you know, it's everything straight. I'm from, I represent Lynn, Massachusetts, but I grew up all over Massachusetts, Louisiana. I've been around, real group home, baby, DYS, all that. Yeah. And you're here today. We're yeah, here to today. talk about it, man. Yeah, so, dope. what was the situation that, that landed you in the group home? I had a, I had a mother that had three kids. I had a um, white mother that was raising, you know, kids that were mixed, biracial babies. And at that time, early, late 90s, early 2000s, you know, that was a little, it wasn't taboo, but it was kind of taboo, you know what I'm saying? For mm -hmm. people to be, you know, having mixed kids and she went through the, she went through the struggles, you know what I'm saying? As, as my mother, you know what I'm saying? And me being the oldest out of my siblings, um, you know, I was a little difficult to deal with, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have a father, you know, the, mm -hmm. the low, the low, the typical stories, you know what I'm saying? For, for sure. babies that, you know, so for people up. that don't know, what's what's a group home like? Man, just break that down. That right there, you see people from all different walks of life. You know what I'm saying? You see people from worse. I, I seen kids worse than mine. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like that's why I like have a sob story. My shit is all about elevation because Absolutely. I seen some kids that had a lot worse than mine. And I always had a loving mother. My mm -hmm. mom, my mom, she's top rank right now. I seen her get her GED to. You know, going to community college, I'm watching my little siblings in the car, you know what I'm saying? Yep. I'm six years old, my sister's four, my little brother is two, you know what I'm yep. saying? And my mom was grinding, we yeah. were doing that. You Salute know to all the moms that, yeah. you know, uh, did what they had to do to make it work, man. Like, From my mom had her issues, bro, yeah. drugs and all of that. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing, man, she always loved us. She Absolutely. never, like, neglected us. She was stealing for mm -hmm. us. We had dope Christmases. Yeah, my my cousin mom, would be yeah. like, why do Bobby and JoJo <laughs> get so yeah. much? Cause Robin uh, steals, you know. Nah, fact. I mean, that was a long time ago, but you know, it's been many years since yeah, I was a kid getting Christmases. Absolutely. So, so for sure, salute all the moms yeah, out there. Yeah, shout out to all the mothers. My grandmother, that's my baby too. You know who you are. My so, what's one thing about a group home that you know people might not think about? That's like a reality, though. It's kind of raw. Cause before I was even D West, my first time at D West it was at 11 years old. For some, you know, some teachers like acting out in school, not really understanding, and being physical. So that was my first. Every time being in DYS, and then I went to the group homes. You know what I'm so saying? So you was in DYS first. Yeah. Okay. And you know, my what's mother, that like for an 11 year old man? By the time I went shit. to DY, I was pretty much <laughs> grown, bro. I was like 16, 17. Hey man, listen, it was different, mm -hmm. you know, because you know, since the early age, I always been around shit. I always been influenced. I like that's a lot of dudes. You know what I'm saying? Don't understand how it is to be a product of your environment, and especially not always having a stable. My mom always moved around, you know what I'm saying? So I got a little bit over here. I got a little bit over here. So being a DYS, you with kids from Boston, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Already doing them, you know what I'm saying? So to me, I'm like, yeah, that's that's different, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, and I really didn't comprehend it. I was still trying to figure out myself. And I was only there my first time. I was there for 10 days. And then I went to a residential, then went to a group home. My mother was like, at that time, she couldn't handle, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? With handing them two kids and having her oldest son acting out was a lot going on. So what's the next move from the from the group home? Gang banging. Gang banging. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, straight like that. Well, now, where are you at? Because I know you say you bounced around a lot. At this now, point, like, just to paint the picture, like... To be honest, I can't even give it a zack because my mom was getting her shit together at that time. You know what I'm saying? My mom, it was a brief time. We was we lived in Everett for a couple years. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was in Fall River. My mom moved around a lot until she got her stable environment. Okay. So, me, the group homes, I, I knew I knew Lynn, Fall River. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and as, as, a, as I got older, as like a 15, 16, I was already... You eventually get committed to DYS? Yeah, I got committed so at, just, to DYS. What's the at events 14? that lead up to that, man? 14 years old. Shit, my mom moved to Everett, man. That shit was like, that was Candyland, man. I'm like, yo, this shit's just like, a, it was so diverse and different shit going on. And I was already, mm -hmm. I was already down at Arrow. So I thought, you know what I'm saying? Doing little armed robberies. I, I got, that was, that was my thing. I got a call for armed robbery at 14. 
Yeah. Running my mom's crib, you think I was a grown man. Yeah, the, like they shit. sidekicks, we was robbing sidekicks, you know what I'm saying? So um that was my first initial break to DYS. Got you. Mm-hmm. I had luck, bro, I had an armed robbery case. It was like the month before my seventeenth birthday. Yeah. Man, and I didn't realize at that point how yeah. lucky I was to Absolutely. Just, now we talking eight to twelve months mm-hmm. instead of Eight to twelve years, bro. Yeah, right, so right. what happened? So you get committed at fourteen. Are you just in there until you're eighteen? Nah, you nah, in and out. Like how's in, the commitment out, work? A little, man? a little in and out. Like I did my first when I got committed. I did three months, three to five. That mm-hmm. right there sounded like three to five years. Yeah, you know what I'm facts. Saying? At that age, it is. <laughs> yeah. as, as far as percentage wise mm-hmm. of your life, you know what I mean. Yes. That's a long. That's a lot more time than Absolutely. we are now. If you're mm-hmm. looking at percentage wise, so DYS could get wild though, man. Yeah, Out of all the yeah. places I've been, man, DYS was like kind of popping the most frequent. Like, it was like almost every day. I'm, I'm gonna keep it more, I, I think DYS is more gangster than being upstate in prison, you know what I'm saying? Cause it, it wasn't no separations, you can't say you belong to this and they can separate you, it was kind of like, you saying you that? Mm-hmm. I bump into dudes this day and they be like, yo, you still on that? Like, I remember you was on that before dudes, I'm like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know this was something that you could pick up and wake up, you know what I'm saying? And that's just being from what I was and growing up in my culture and being in Lynn, you know, my man, shout out my man, Mark Beasy, he brought up, like, Lynn's, like, little, that's, like, little Cali and Cali, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, that's just what it is, it's Baby Stockton, you feel me? Gang gotta, yeah, everything, like, shout out to all my Asians, Cambodian, Vietnamese, all that, you feel me? Like, that's my family, so, growing up in the city and being back and forth and being over here, I, I got an idea, and then being around my family's from Boston, I got a heavy, people that know me that know, shout out to all my family in Boston. Yeah, they know, like, so me being in DYS, it was kind of like, oh, you a crip? It was like, yeah, I'm a baby face, long hair, chubby, you know what I'm saying? They wasn't going for that. So I had to learn to really get physical, and that's where the cycle builds, right there. Mm-hmm. Like, you got you to gotta be tough, you got to be the toughest. Is that something where it's like, just address things head on, let, let, yeah. let's go get this out the way? Yeah, type hell of yeah. Deal, for sure. Hell yeah. So what is it like now you're in and out of DYS, now you're going, when you get out, are you going to school? And nah, what's like school like? Remember, like I told you, my first introduction to DYS was through school. Okay. So I always, I've been an 80 kid, but 80, you can see I always move in. I got to talk, like I always been a kid that couldn't stay still for very long, you know what I'm saying? And not understanding that language of math and not, I learned how to, I taught myself how to read in DYS at 14, you know what okay. I'm saying? So. School was never my thing. I know I know that at an early age, like, yeah, this is this is not for me. You know what I'm saying? And that's where my behavioral and then I had in home shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That was outside my mother's control and my control. Yeah. And school was the outlet, like a lot of people. Absolutely, that's for sure, bro. When do you get introduced to the adult system? I was about to age out, so they let me out two weeks before I aged out because I went back to DYS. I I came out a couple of times in and out and then my, my longest stretch I did I believe it was eight to 12 months, and then it got, kept on getting extended because I was getting involved in shit in the DYS. I came home, I aged out a week before I came home. I wasn't even home three months, caught a pistol case. Do you make bail, are you on the streets, or you just um, three months later, now you're back? No, nah, I bailed out, I did a little 90 days container, you know what I'm saying, because they use my DYS. You know how they do it, they use mm-hmm. the DR, hey, he's dangerous, he did this and this and that, so that's what they use, so I did the 90 days off of rip. Like, right. They didn't even let me bail out, you know what I'm saying? So. The dangerousness here and yeah, all right that. off the rip. So I already knew I was public. I mean, I mean that's more. crazy because they always say like that juvenile is <laughs> yeah. supposed to be chill. Nah, we all I mean, know I, that. They still I talk know. about to this day. What ends up happening with that case, man? You out on bail? You end up? I'm out on bail. I end up. I end up actually beating that case, and then I caught attempted murder. I okay. said right after. Boom. End up beating that. With my attempted at murder, it never even went to um. To, to Superior Court because yeah. the victim never showed up. What, what was that your was, story? That was that was the case right there. Never even made it yeah, to Superior. Yeah, didn't even make it there. I mean, they were trying to, it was one of them things where somebody said they seen something. They mm-hmm. never even, the witnesses, the victims, the one victim had multiple different stories. Yeah. It was kind of like, I had the record to back it up. The DR already had something going, and that's just what it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Is it, and this is something you fought? Did you bail out on that one too, or now you gotta sit for a little nah, bit I sat more for a serious little, I case? Sat, yeah, I sat for a little bit, did like probably five, five, eight months. My first time in the Delk County, you know, I ended up bailing out. Okay, what county was this? This, this is Barricka. Oh, this is Middlesex yeah, County. Yeah. All right, what was that like for you, man? A lot of fighting, a lot of- <laughs> Hella fights, man. Cause at this time, you gotta think, like I'm, I'm from a city, like when I went to Boston, you go to Cambridge, you don't really see Crips and Bloods, you know what I'm saying? That's like. That's like, to me, it was like, 
that was like some like my community, you know what I'm saying? Right. Lynn Low, mm -hmm. Far River, shit like that. So you, when you're seeing dudes, and Baricka, you seen all these dudes, you gotta think dudes from Low go there. So you mm -hmm. mean dudes, I'm, I'm 17, about to be 18. And I'm not really understanding the dynamic like that, cause I'm got my homies, so I walk into a unit, it's kinda like, yeah, this is what you're doing, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You scared, I was scared to death, you know what I'm saying? But right. that scared, it was how do you, like- How do you get through that fear, bro? That I mean, fear Everybody gets fear if you don't if you oh, don't. yeah, you're not a real one if you don't, you can't even keep it 100. I was 17, I ain't never seen so many dumb moves and so many people that was opposing crip. And I'm looking at dudes like, come on, man, you, 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 mm -hmm. know, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I don't even know you and I gotta fight you. You know what I'm saying? So that's a different type of beast in itself. Like you fighting dudes you don't even know. It's dudes right. that's getting, they got down with gangs in jail for protection where this is my culture, this is where I came yeah. from. Why yeah. do you think people do that? It just, protection. A lot mm -hmm. of dudes, um, a lot of dudes can't stand on their own. And it, some dudes have their own reasons. You know what gotcha. I'm saying? I have dudes that genuinely seen the culture and probably want to be involved in it and just didn't have the right dudes. And it just, it's a gateway for everything. You know I think a lot of people too, man, we look for that brotherhood too. Yeah, man. absolutely. We look about something we could bond over and things like that, man. So you sit there, that's Middlesex County. Eventually though, you end up where? You end up in Worcester County? Um, so I ended up bailing out after Barricka. That's that's my first time. I've been back, I, like I did a lot of back and forth. Matter of fact, let me, run, let me run it back a little bit. So when I bailed out from that, after I did like low five to seven months, whatever it was, I ended up bailing out for another, um, I bailed out for 10,000 and I was out on bail on another bill too. I was on a bracelet in Dorchester. My grandmother got me and I was just young, man. Yeah. I, I mean, when you get that many things open too, man, yeah. eventually things start start to catch yeah. up, man. So. And I didn't even understand it. I was so much on, on just, I didn't even understand the world. I had so much, now that, I can, now that I'm older, I can comprehend what I was going through. At that time, I was mm -hmm. 17, about to be 18. I did my whole life in foster homes, group homes, residentials, DYS, you know what I'm saying? So. It just like I'm out on bail. I took the bracelet off and I was out. So to you, this is just like a normal way of living. Yeah. This is how it's pretty much always been. It seems like, man. Yeah. I mean, how tough is that for someone at such a young age, man? That's why I said like my my shit wasn't even a sob story because it wasn't really tough. It was kind of like I seen my mom getting abused when I was younger, so I always felt like I wanted to be a protector. I always trained mm -hmm. myself. Like my mother could tell stories of me jumping in and she feels, you know what I'm saying? She goes to her guilt with that. Right. With me, it always been something like, that's just, at a young age, I like, oh, I, gotta, I gotta be strong. You know what I'm saying? I gotta learn how to fight. I gotta, you know, I gotta know what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Cause you wanna be taken advantage of. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Especially due to women in my family. I see women get taken advantage of. Yep. So I knew off the rip that I had to protect myself and everybody that I loved around me. Okay, now was there not a, a, a father around to, to make you feel like now you gotta be like the man? As such yeah, my father, my, my biological father, he was, oh, he, he did 20 years. He, I met my father in prison then, nine years later, I was on the same unit with him. Wow. <laughs> that on me, wow. this is real. I appreciate you coming through. I appreciate you I too, mean, likewise. I know we got we got some people here, man. I don't know if yeah. you if this is. Nah, the I got shout. I gotta shout them out, man. I got, I got my man Mark Beasy, man, Salute. from East Boston, real one. We was up in the max, in the box. Told Cubs, I'll be right back. Movie time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got my little crow, my twin quest, man. Movie star, man. Well, I told y'all he's gonna be okay. a movie star. So don't. And my yeah. man, Mark Beasy, they going up. And me and my man, Arthur Supreme, man. He, he just. Salute, man, bro. I, 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 I ain't never so seen a Caucasian more blacker than him, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he's the illest, man. That's my dog. I knew him since a baby, man. That's, yeah, that's salute, my doggy. Bro. You Word. feel me? And then. Now, you know what I'm saying, the best, I say the best for last, not even the best for last, I love all my mans equally, man. Loyalty makes you family. It's my brother, man, my big brother, man. Shout out to Long Beach Compton, man. I got Cartier, yeah, man. Yeah, that's my guy. Cash right. flow, man, doing these taxes. We that's doing, my guy right yeah, there, too, man. We live next to each other for fucking <laughs> years, bro. Each other. Yeah. I, remember, I remember when I met him, he was like, you from Cali? Because just the way I was coming off. Mm. Like, I'm, I'm in the all... These dudes, all these dudes, I never seen so many white bloods and I never heard of a vice lord in right. these gangs. Word. So we about to get right into yeah, that. We're going to take go. a little break, let's man. We're going to get my man Cali to come over and sit mm -hmm. down and talk a little bit about that, man. Yo, just, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Bounce Back Podcast. First and foremost, I want to start this segment off by saying free JoJo at MCI Concord. If you have people that's locked up right now that you want to give a shout out and you want to see their name highlighted on the bottom of the screen, make sure you drop it in the comment section put their name, put free their name, and then the facility that currently housed that right now, we're going to get them on there, man. On that note, back to the episode. Let's see in Massachusetts, D.O.C., you don't do that if you 
jacking you crap. You just don't, because off the rep, is we the bottom of the food chain in the DOC and everybody that did time in Massachusetts, Shirley Max, to any camp, we're not the majority. You know what I'm saying? So I turned three years going to the county, going upstate to seven and a half. That's what it was, standing on morals and principles. And I seen a lot of dudes I looked up to, dudes even that was vicious, that folded. Hey, we're back with the Bounce Back Podcast. If you notice, things look a little bit different right now after the break, man. So why don't you introduce everybody with you, man? I know you did that before, but now that they on camera, we can yeah, put gotta, a face to the name. Yeah, I got to introduce the guys, man. I got my big brother, man, from Long Beach to Compton, man. You know, Cartier, man, Cash Flow, he doing, you know, I got the, you know. Yeah, you got the tax service, you know, we out here helping Talk people. Down. Helping Absolutely. people with their tax situation. Absolutely. I got, I got my day one off the Supreme. She's out here. Absolutely. You know, I got my I got my brother, man. He's in the pen, man. He going to the story, man. But, you know, my man, Marty Booby, man. You already know the vibes. Last and not least, man. Once you feel me, the movie star, gangland, man. All that. Yeah, man. Thanks. Hey, thanks everybody for pulling up, man. But salute. So we'll just get into the part of the story, man, where you where you had ran into mm -hmm. a man right here. He asked you if he was from Cali. Why did you ask him if he was from Cali, man? Oh, man, the energy just reminded me of back home. Because, you know, when somebody had brought him to me, he said, hey, man, this is young cat over here. So I'm like, you know, he came, so they brought him over. And I'm like, and I'm like, yo, where are you from? Because uh, I'm thinking he's from, I'm thinking he's from LA, something just his whole vibe, the way he's talking and everything. And I'm like, it's just the whole energy. He's like, oh, I'm from Atlanta. And I'm like, you sure you're not from California? So, what, what jail was this at at this point? What's the county? What's the yeah. county? Yeah, I got How did you out. end up in what's the Oh, so you got shipped Yeah, I got shipped out of Bristol County. Yeah, me and a couple of the homeboys got into a little altercation. And, but at the time, they wanted to. They want to give us a taste, um, a taste of our own medicine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially then tell them what they want in their head. They're like, all right, well, we're gonna ship you out somewhere where you guys ain't cool. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The biggest difference between Bristol County and Worcester County. I, I never oh. seen the stuff that they were doing over there. Like I never, I never heard of a vice lords or I don't even know. Something I'm going to a county ain't gonna be no problems. When you walk in, you're like, okay, that's what we're doing. So that wasn't the case. There were nah. no problems right off the bat. Right off the bat. Damn. And, and what was it about my man right here that like drew y'all towards each other? Was it just him approaching you about the Cali thing? And what was y'all bond like after that? A homeboy of ours, mutual friend from Kilby, introduced us because mm -hmm. my name was through the jails because dudes dropped a note on me, but then they said, I say I checked off. But then I had the actual ticket of them mm -hmm. reporting to whatever they, we call them Ips Upstate, but I mm -hmm. forgot the exact name they called they yeah. little yeah. investigative yeah. cops. Joey Berry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, and um, he's like, "Yo, I've been hearing about you, the real one." Like, ah, uh -huh. and then and she dosed, and he's like, "Oh yeah, you know, typical like Vandalin, yeah. all that." Like, so what? So you said it was like kind of popping right off the off the rip, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, how to press you? Yeah, he came to the door. I came in. It was late night. Oh, where you from? I'm from Lenny's Street, walking gangster crib. Why? What's up? Ah, uh, cause well, I'm not checking off. You know, you know right. the whole politics, and then. Sure enough, when they seen the energy and the one dudes try to talk to me, like, yo, I'm going to put your fade one on one. I'm like, now nah, the door pop, you just you get G to the O, you know what I'm saying? We ain't got a politic like that. And, um, you get caught, you saying in the hole now? The dude, somebody dropped the note. So they, they end up being a whole eternal thing with themselves. So somebody mm -hmm. dropped the note and then they call me for a lawyer visit. So I'm thinking I'm going to see my lawyer because I just got shipped out. I'm, going, I'm thinking I'm going to my lawyer visit. Like, no, nah, you go right here. Boom, it's a whole shoot up dude, like look like gang unit. I mean, what's that make you think about them? Like, why? I mean, that's not that's not, that's not not what we do. Like, the whole yeah. dropping notes thing. Like, I mean, at the time, I didn't even know until I walked in there. At the whole time, I, I'm thinking I'm like, they send me some questions like, oh, you have one gang Like, no. Told him I don't gang bang, cause that's the that's what you do. If yeah, you're trying yeah. to be a stand, you don't tell them, especially in Massachusetts DOC, you don't do that if you jacking you crap. You just don't, cause off the rep is we the bottom of the food chain in the DOC. And everybody that did time in Massachusetts, Shirley Max, to any camp, we're not the majority. You know what I'm saying? So and I already knew because I've been trained, I had homies that been up top, and I already knew what it was. So I'm like, I don't know what's going on. They're like, well, we got to know right here, staying from these guys, that if you don't get out of here, that it's something's going to happen to you. I'm like, well, I don't have a problem. And I don't know what they're talking about. 
but I don't have a problem. Can you please send me back? I, this is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't want to make myself look bad or anything, so this is what I'm standing on. And I know not to tell them, because I was snitching, you know what I'm saying? You don't tell them, oh yeah, I'm a, that's, you might as well just go to PC. Why are you even trying to fake the funk? So, mm-hmm. and, and that's what, that was a start right there. And that's even before I met him. After mm-hmm. I, got, I got out the hole and they put me on the unit with him. Sorry. And because I wasn't self-admitting that I was a part of that and these dudes are saying that, mm-hmm. that they were like, all right, well, we're just gonna eliminate this problem mm-hmm. and we're gonna throw you in a hole until we can find somewhere to put you. And that's how that started. I mean, what what kind of other injustices do does like the administration do in in those systems? They they, they cause the the climate issues. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like regardless, like I got dominant homies that I'm cool with. I, like that's just unheard of. You know? And I feel like at that time and place, it was probably new to them or whatever they had going on. And I don't, I don't know. Like mm-hmm. I, I all I know, I had to do what I had to do. Cause I stood on that, I turned three years going to the county, going upstate to seven and a half. And I know we'll get to that later, but that's what it was. Standing on morals and principles, and I seen a lot of dudes I looked up to, dudes even that was vicious, that folded. You know what I'm saying? And I probably already know the answer to this, obviously. But you did you ever at least consider like let me just fall back from this? I was never in a situation to do that. I always my it was always front line, and my back was against the wall. That was the environment that they put me in, and I was already trained. Like, yo, this is what happened. I done had homies that got jumped and got stabbed. You know what I'm saying? I just knew, like, without a reasonable doubt, I just know I'm gonna take the stream measurements. Without, I'm gonna do what I have to do because I'm not being victimized. Because I seen that look of what happens. You know what I'm saying? I seen the dudes that went to PC. I seen the dudes on drugs. I seen, I seen. So we gonna go in chronological order, man. You get out the hole. Y'all link. What's yeah. what's the and see, what's the story from there? The energy that he had. That's you know, you gotta understand, I'm a lot older than him. You know, mm-hmm. 40 years old. So when I started coming to the East Coast in the late 90s, there wasn't no mm-hmm. red and blood out here. So I seen the transition, and it was kind of weird to me because at first it wasn't that wasn't. What do you think was part of that transition? I if could you be. looking back, do you think it's like uh, music influence? Right, right, and it just out of nowhere around the mid, I say around like 2000. By the time I went upstate, not too long before, you know, we was neighbors. That's when I, you know, when I first went into classification. I'm like, I mean, I started meeting mm-hmm. guys from different parts of the state. I'm like, Shit. I'm like, whoa, really? You're a crip? Oh, I'm a crip. I'm a blood. And <laughs> like, oh, okay, wow. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was just, uh, it was different. So, but you know, it wasn't like a lot of it, like he had mentioned earlier. A lot of it was for protection. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's for. Yep. You know, various reasons. Dudes don't come from it. I came from it. Like, my dad right. chilled, you know, when he was young. You know, Tookie. Yeah. Was, you, know, yeah. you know, my dad, you know, smoked a joint with Tookie. Yeah. Smoked I'll always Tookie. remember you showing me the uh, the pictures, too, yeah. from yeah. right yeah. up from the right. riots, man. Yeah. You was a little yeah. kid with your mom or something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. that. Oh, that man. still stands yeah. out to this yeah. day, yeah. man. Really from it. So it's like when I seen... You know, when, you know, it was like um, after years of going through, you know, the bit, and we, mm-hmm. had, you know, some of the situations and mm-hmm. things that I went through. And um, and then to meet somebody like that, it was like, you know, that felt like they, they was from the culture. Because a lot of dudes don't understand. It just, it became a fad. You mm-hmm. know, it was just picked it up. It's all cool until you look yeah. at that elbow. Yeah, chronologically, what's next? Y'all are together. How long are you in? What's the county after this? <laughs> what's going on? So, tried to like you know steer him in a you know right direction how, how receptive w- was he how receptive would you say that that you Not were at that really, point was he, he was like you know like i introduced him in you know what you know what we call knowledge yourself and everything mm-hmm. like you know, brother like you know you could do this and but everybody got to take it in their time everybody mm-hmm. got to learn in their time you know because yep. i was ready you know um i don't never put myself in no 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 crazy you know mm-hmm. Doing time over there. This is still uh, waiting trial. Yeah, but I was doing like a brief little sentence because I was sentenced in Bristol over some DYS shit. Mm-hmm. They got me so, but I was still fighting my gun case before I went upstate. Now you go upstate. Where you at? Walpole. So every camp I went to, besides one camp, we was outnumbered. Yeah, and like in Middleton, in my county, it's even. Like mm-hmm. it's like your Walpole state. Like man, what's uh? So my first day in Walpole, I just knew to say like. Not a crit, you know what I'm saying? Because you're going to go to OU, you're going to go to PC. I had homies that went there, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I didn't go to, you know what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? So I just mm-hmm. self admit that I was a crip. I couldn't mm-hmm. do certain things because there was already been in my mind just not to be victimized. That was the mm-hmm. only thing that I, mm-hmm. I was trained on because I seen so many dudes, you know what I'm saying? And I seen it, and there wasn't too many 
keyways. You, you didn't see too many keyways on tunnel. You know what I'm saying? And my man Mar Beats, when he he gonna tell you, like you didn't really see one, right? So when you seen one that was on that, you had to be prepared for the five on ones. You know what I'm saying? You had to be prepared for the shit that came with it. And then you had the administration that's like, all right, well, you don't want to talk to us, you don't want us to help you, well, fuck you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, and then I learned that at a young age. And that shit stuck with me. So I ended up signing, because I, I wouldn't supplement that I was a crip. I wouldn't I didn't want to go to um the whole or you, which is PC. Mm -hmm. And um they made me sign. Um Basically, form like man, if anything happened to me, I'm consenting. I want to go to population mm -hmm. against their will. That if anything happens to me, it's not their fault. Right. So I'm walking. I'm seeing a whole bunch of shit. Dudes talking loud. My my heart wants to come out of my chest. I'm gonna piss on everything. I'm mm -hmm. like, damn, cause I can't believe I'm doing this. You know what I'm saying? But that that adrenaline. I walk in. Are you gang bang? I'm like, yeah, I'm a crip. Just walked away. Slept with my sneakers on. I'm like, oh, this is not mm -hmm. real. Next day, go to the chow hall, I already know what to do. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I already know this. I was one dude, I've never seen so many opposing, you know what I'm saying, dudes that represent something against me that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So I just knew I had to do something, you know what I'm saying? And that's where it started. And it, got, it started getting shaken over there. Yeah, first. And before they knew what was going on, I already had one of their homies. And right there, they had decided out for me. And they put you, what happened? I was 10 in block. block. You go the whole Yeah, I went, I went to 10 block. Yeah, yep. I went to 10 block for a little bit and then I left it to the max. Bro, like, I'm only 20 now. I feel like shit. I'm 40. Yeah. So, like, I had to teach grown ass men how to move, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, and then you go up there, then it's, then you see the, then they design it. So now you get up to the max. When do you run into my man Mort Beasy? Uh, that's is late. This, that's... Is this right up the rip? Okay. Nah, nah. This, I heard about cuts from the minute though. You know okay. what I'm saying? Because that's when we had the gray and the green side. So you knew who the all stars were on that side. You know <laughs> who the all stars were on that side. So we but used to. For people that don't know, like YouTube, man, people not all from Massachusetts. We got viewers from everywhere. Right, right, right. And talk right. about just the max. And what's the gray side? I've never even been up the max. Yeah. What's the gray side? What's the green side? And just talk a little bit about what that was like when you went up. So there. they used to separate um, gangs by color code Boston Street gangs, um, gangs, color coded gangs, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And. Um, they should put it on, they'll be on the gray side, which is what the north side kind of, yeah. and then you had the green side on the south side and it had different units in the politics within that. And you know, you know who was who, you know what I'm saying? You go to the gym, see cuz playing basketball, they cuz that moved on me, you know what I'm saying? You get you banging on and that's, you never really had no interaction. So a lot of dudes was able to disguise they, they in the coward during that shit, you feel me? And um, so dudes, I, I met him coming back from DDU for my second DDU trip. So what, what what did they send you to uh, DDU for? Um, multiple inmate, um, multiple in, inmate um altercation. Okay. The first time and um, at this point, like, is it in your head now? You are you thinking like, okay, now stakes are a little bit higher too. Uh, like you say, upstate Walpole. Mm -hmm. Does this come into your mind where like now dudes might try to use steel or something like that? Of course, I, I seen a dude my my second week there. We done it. You know what I'm saying? So off the rep, I'm like, yeah, we're not. My homie taught me how to make one of five five hours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta stay up and get going. So you have to, and I know I was somebody that was a target. So if somebody that, like myself, like somebody wanted, and you know, we had our own in, internal politics, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So you always had to be alert, you know what I'm saying? And at this point, I already turned three years to five years. Yeah. So you stay ready, ain't gotta get ready to. So what are you doing as far, like, are you on a system where like, okay, like things are popping off? Now you want to be physically ready, you doing the burpees, you working out every day. Talk to me a little bit about that program you got going on with the working out. Impeccable, man. Free the homies, they, they'll tell you, bro. <laughs> put a little bit of weight too, but. We, we all do, brother. <laughs> but we too. Talk about free my man Cannon, one of my Damu homies, man. Like, he's in, the, in DDU doing a thousand burpees on my son. You feel me? Like, strength. Hour and a half, strength. Competition. Come on, cuz. Nah, don't call me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he dime move. You know what I'm saying? They designed it, but we built off of some positive shit. You feel me? I just let my homeboy back here, like, cause we understood, like, all right, they're setting us up now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And DDU was our our opportunity to connect with real ones. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Cause we already going at it with our own or the ones that's not really active. So the ones that's really active at this time in DDU, before you was going to DDU for those stupid shit, you was meeting the ones that was doing some doggy shit. You feel mm -hmm. me? Right. So what is, like, explain DDU for the people, like I said, maybe not from Massachusetts. It's the, it's, it's the super max within the max. It's, it's the ADX. It's the end of the line, yeah, right? It's pretty much. A hole within the hole. Yeah. yeah. So after they shoot. Yeah. yeah. So, yo, we're going to get more into that. And we'll be right back with the Bounce Back podcast right after this, man. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, what's up, guys, man? If y'all ain't tuned into the YouTube Streets podcast yet, make sure y'all go tune in, like, comment, and subscribe. They're doing big things over there, man. So on that note, make sure y'all enjoy the episode. Hey, everybody, and we're back with the Bounce Back podcast. We're just getting into the part of the story where you two had met. Now you yeah, fresh, you met in DDU. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One more time for the people. Yo, one, more, one more time for the people who uh, who may not have caught the episode. Man, tell the people who you are real oh, quick. Where you from? More busy man, more underscore busy East Boston man. You know, mm-hmm. man, it's big, man. Let's see, he got so many. Man, he goes by so many. Yeah, but it's all the same right, thing. So, you feel right. me? If you know one, you know more. Right. So more. What's your first impressions? Duh, so we we had Tim Block, you know. I was with, I was with my RIP, my bro, Nice. He was like, yo. RIP, man. That's in paradise. Such and such. A, um, that's bro right there. Like, oh, okay. He was like, yeah, man, you know, the reincarnated Tookie Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I took a liking to him off the rip. It was like, more like, you know, you, you learn who you are in there, mm-hmm. in that hole, so, you know, stand at that wall. You know yeah, absolutely. So he, I could tell he was, you know, at the height of his career with this, this gang shit, you know? All right, so this is... This is in the max. Yeah, this is in the max. Yeah. What's, what side? Okay, what side do you want? At, at this time, you all we all go to we all share the same hole, so mm-hmm. it don't matter what side you was on. Now, when y'all eventually both get out, y'all together? Nah, we was uh, we both. Y'all? Yeah, we haven't been together since I seen them since I've been home. Right here, oh, okay, this is the first, yeah. first time y'all. Saw. We okay. talked about it though. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's nah, been years what, in the making. You know, I'm glad I could be like yeah, you know this, what I mean that conduit. Yeah, like, I, I seen him in the club. Mm-hmm. When I got okay, yo. We got out. Talk about like how important it is to kind of keep your mind right in that DDU place, bro. Like they bury you in there, man. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a mental war zone. Those lose their mind. Nah. Shout out her boss, man. A lot, a lot of dudes. Roscoe, he got mm-hmm. like me. He got a whole gang of, but you know who you are, man. Like I seen a lot of good brothers, man. That did nine, ten years in DDU. Mm-hmm. Militant, mind gone, Sharif. The system that didn't break them. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And that was my motivation. I'm like, cause I seen the dudes that was stabbing dudes, getting busy even more than me. And I'm like, these dudes are crying. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like banging on doors, calling dudes racist. Like you should see dudes self destruct that wasn't even them. You know what wow. I'm saying? And then the the police brutality. All right, we control everything. Mm-hmm. Form of like you're gonna do what we wanna do if you want. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of dudes couldn't handle that. You know what I'm saying? And people the police too. Yeah, Oh, oh, yeah, so that's how it really made a lot of brothers unify. Brothers, yeah. Especially brothers that, some brothers that wasn't seen eye to eye and shit about shit. You know what yeah, saying? we should all be able to uh, come together to against them, you know right. what I mean? Because that's the real, yeah. the biggest gang out there, man. And, they, and it's systematically they, they, they designed like that. Yeah. Like, when you got to think, when they go into the police academy, they're telling them, dude, don't listen to them, they're manipulators. Mm-hmm. Like, they dehumanize, they're trained to have a bad attention. And so, I have no personal vendetta against this dude. He wants to go home, he's making his little money, go home to his family, but he's trained to treat me like shit. Yeah. So now I'm trained to be like, all right, well, I'm not no bitch. You're a little white boy or a black dude from suburban town. Like, cause you're not talking to me like that. We don't even rub shoulders in real life. Uh, other other than like just how they talk to you, what other kind of things do they do when you in there, man? Did- are you nervous about like the food you're getting? Like, don't yeah. they give y'all the, yeah. the trade? You don't know. They what control our food. They control everything. How we eat, shower. The sergeants on on shower day in DDU. Hurry up! You've been in there for five minutes. Mm. Yo, I gotta shave my head. I didn't even turn the water on. Well, hurry the fuck up! We be dragging you out of there. That was my first alter altercation with COs. You know what I'm saying? And it was just, uh, you know what I'm saying? They just wanted to test it. Then when they see you willing to stand up for yourself and go there, and they they teach you like, oh, you're you're a gangster. You didn't you didn't tuck your tail in. You didn't turn the medical. So now. They're doing oxymoron shit to you. Because if you do that to them, they're going to tell on you. What do you learn about yourself when you sit in there in, in DDU for that amount of time, man? There's got to be a lot of self-reflection. I yeah, you learn that you're your own worst enemy. Because you got to learn that you can only respond to... Like, you you control your reaction. I don't know if y'all saw, they they about to shut down Concord right yep. now. I just so, got off the so phone with my Nash, brother. So that's Concord. Come on, keep shutting down. Y'all. I don't see them building more minimums, man. Like, what is... They gotta change the point system. Start sending people that's to what minimums. What do you think is gonna happen? They like, gotta change the point system. They gotta change the whole. They gotta abolish this prison. You know what I'm saying? They make guns, mm-hmm. but then you get caught. You don't have a license. You're doing three hundred. You know what I'm saying? In jail for the same product that they design. They take the human out of it. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like once you, they treat you as you a sex offender, like somebody that touched little girls or kids or yeah, like yeah, you in the same. While they group. get while they get better treatment, more yeah. places. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then the crazy part, and then they try to gas you up to beat them up. And then when you beat them up, you get a, a case. You sent me a, a video 
Tell me why you sent me that and talk a little bit about that situation. So that's one of the main things I want to can't come up here, boys, because I watched us turn into monsters. We couldn't say nothing at all. And it was kind of like, all oh, these dudes just woke up one day, they realized that he- Oh, you talking about when you was on the news? Five yeah. investigates on the inside during the shakedown at Sousa Baranowski Correctional Center after this violent attack on staff here Sunday. This one, what they do, they had a rookie there, they want to show the rookie how it was done. You know what I'm saying? Like, and cousin, like what, five, two? Swing's hella short, you feel yeah. me? Cousin's hella small, you know what I'm saying? They get with cuz, you know what I'm saying? So our thing is just like, I'm out, so I just got my meds. Mm -hmm. I have eight months to go home. This is one of my comrades, one of my homeboys. That has nothing to do with no, see, I'm watching police, this is where George Floyd, this is everything going on. We watching black dudes get killed every day. Mm -hmm. so the and I seen, I'm there. seeing three COs on a dude that's five two. The escalation just goes from there, you know what I'm saying? Dudes get GT, whatever, boom. We do what we do was a coordinated attack by six inmates on two correctional officers. The inmates punch and smash a chair over the head of one officer. A second is beaten just out of view. They grab them up. They don't show that part because it's on a blind spot. So they grab them up, slam them. Deputy man. Commissioner Chris Fallon says it appears the melee began moments after a gang leader targeted an officer and attacked. This is literally the guys who have not been able to follow the rules while they've been incarcerated. We couldn't say nothing at all. And it was kind of like, all oh, these dudes just woke up one day, they realized that The attack is the second on staff here in the past month. The maximum security prison houses some of the most dangerous felons in the state and is home to more than 25 security threat groups or prison gangs. How, how the fuck did five clips and one GD Get involved with that, and they all from different hoods in different places. They came and beat us up. Yeah, they, they just pumped us up. And I had eight months. Nah, we didn't have none to do. With <laughs> <that>. <laughs> and you brought that up. They you brought came, that up. They yeah. came. They came. I mean, did, did y'all at least know that. like that shit popped off? Came like two days later and just re tactical team raided us, us too, and brought us. They brought us all up to the hole to get sipped out of state. All of before them. I even start, man, free, oh, free the homie swing, man, swing, yeah. free cuz, man, free yeah. gangster bow. You know I love you, cuz, man. You know what I'm saying, Chai, so you know what I'm saying, Casper, mm -hmm. it's, it's so many, my, my cousin, my dude, you know, you all catch the wolf. So many real ones that went through so many things, you know what I'm saying, and, and all the fellas that kept it real, that went through abuse after that wasn't even involved. So basically how this how it happened, something happened to one of the homies arguing with the CEO about his medication, they didn't want to let him out. He ended up letting him out. He's like, hurry up and grab your meds. They got into a little dispute, nothing serious. Oh, now, is they, this how you turn your bid into a longer bid date? Right? Yeah, I was already doing it. I already turned for off and just gang shit. You know what I'm saying? I already turned three to five. After all that, I ended up getting two. I got two and a half on an after. So, matter of fact, he called my family and kidnapped me out, the, out of the tomb. He was beating me. And you know, we can't we can't write no reports. You know what I'm saying? Even if you put a grievance in, you're not going to put the... And this, you're just going to go that force. They already kind of know. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it was kind of like, I had a CO2. Like, yeah, you come out yourself, bitch. We're fucking you up. We're not feeding you, we're not doing nothing. So then, you know, I got yeah. choked out. Oh, God, with him, cuts and shackles on my feet, on my suit. You, know you got a lawsuit out of that? Nah. Listen, exactly. kept the gangster. That's why I said we don't rub shoulders in real life. I don't want him to get convicted. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I don't want that. Even that, it's like a, you're going to get sprayed a hundred times till you get on the floor, then they're going to come in, fuck you up. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, you're, then it goes the mental warfare. Oh, you stood up for yourself. We respect you. You know what I'm saying? You didn't do that. It's like, I got a disclosed <laughs> thumb, my foot's fucked up, I got pain, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To this day, you feel thanks me? Thanks for so, your respect, though. Yeah, but thanks for me. Go suck a dick and die yeah, slow, you faggot. <laughs> so what do you think's like the most dehumanizing part of... It's just the fact that you know that you're, this is what... Because I was a little kid, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I, now I see the trauma, you know what I'm saying? I see that, what they designed. Because I, I always take pride in myself being self-made. Ain't nobody... I was self-made, I was a product of my environment, you know what I'm saying? Being around what I was around, you know what I'm saying? And like Cuz said, when I was growing up, this set was crap, like, that was the thing. Like, I was, I didn't, I was growing around Asian Crips. Growing up and what I stood for and that in itself and then how the administration attacks that too. I was in a place where I was getting knowledge of self, thanks to my brother behind me, shout out M1, and I was really in DDU, I was reading. I was becoming, I was in, probably in the best shape of my life. Three different times a day for two hours more, you know what I'm saying? It's like, up them break night. Yeah, yeah we you up. know what I'm saying? Like you read them books, right. message to the black man, right. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Waiting to the midnight hour by his own Wayne Ford. He just brought that up. Like, yo, bro, remember I sent you this 
book and I read all that and I understood my culture, you know what I'm saying? Blue Rage, Black Redemption. Like, I was a crip and I didn't even understand what a crip was, you know what I'm saying? I, just, I didn't even know, I knew it came from Canada, but I didn't even, that didn't even mean something, you know what I'm saying? To the point where dudes feel like they're more elite than us out here. That, that was irrelevant to me. And then I understood and learned myself. And that's where I became more aware, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, this is all on you. How you react, back to what I was saying to you yeah. earlier, how you react is all on you. That's you know the what only saying? thing you can control. And me and him, world. man. He, he, he was you react to, to people. Yeah, me situation. and him, man, we was, we was building. I was outnumbered. I was with all the ops on the tier. They, there was a politic and arguing on them. Like, uh, we're not doing all that, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They moved me to a unit I wasn't supposed to be on. Came right back. Came mm -hmm. right back, got a cracking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, you wasn't even going for 10 minutes. Right, like, yeah. we ain't here trying to glorify, glorify yeah, anything, right, man. Right. That's why we, we get into the real questions. Like, um, what's the worst part mm -hmm. about prison? Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we need to know. So how would you answer that question? What is the worst part about prison? It's the worst part, man. There's just no need for it, man. Like, if unless you... I, I said there's only two people that need to be in jail, sex offenders and rats. Since you want to tell on everybody and you feel unsafe, here's the people that can keep you safe. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Like, like just go ahead and do that. And then motherfuckers that can't control themselves, that can't can handle themselves around women and children and people that's just penis, go ahead. Just being this, because they cater to the motherfuckers. We all know that. You know what I'm saying? And if you're a real one, unless you're not snitching and working with the imps or whatever's going on, they're going to... Like even me doing this interview, that's, that's the reason why I didn't want to come through. Cause I had to try to set me up on the show. There's, there's a whole different entity bigger than what's going on. And because you don't rehabilitate on there, what that means to them, you know what I'm saying? All my items are done. Mm -hmm. Tookie Williams, Nipsey Hussle, George Jackson, Jonathan Jackson, Huey P. Newton. You know what I'm saying? So you got to, like my mind is like, damn. And then I met, I don't know if you guys know Skin Tight. Since, yeah. It's powerful shit I ever heard. I know, uh, I heard the name. Yeah, the whole, like, 20 years. Free yeah. skin type, man, innocent, man. They had a lot of people. Uh, yeah, like, and a lot of, dangerous, and, I, and not even yeah. dangerous, he's just he's honorable just, dude, yeah, you feel just, me? Powerful. He's dangerous because yeah, he's mentally, yeah. he's mentally something that, yeah. that's a definition when, when administration wants to break you, they're going to send you to different places and send you different things and you got to, you, you go to California or you go in certain places where there's mm -hmm. real racial tension and you from Massachusetts. Massachusetts is a real small level or anything. That's like it. even being a crip of blood, you go to do the Kelly, like, boss, come on, cuz. Like, mm -hmm. that's like, we know about sports and racism out there. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So when you ben got Affleck certain, and yeah, you know what I'm saying? And Mark Wahlberg, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you don't see dudes like this. Like, even when you go back to what, oh, tatted up, I always had face tests since I was 13, 14. I had a little, you know, pretty boy shit. Mm -hmm. This right here was, I lost hope at one point. I'm like, fuck it, I'm tired of dudes asking. I'm a baby face, so I'm tired of dudes asking when I'm banging. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see it on my face. Mm -hmm. Don't even ask me. Mm -hmm. You know what's up, and we're gonna go. You know what I'm saying? I probably got your gang whacked out. I can wrap my shit, and we're gonna go from there. And that was just me falling victim to just frustration. I, I didn't know when he came up. You know what I'm saying? I turned five to seven. The CEO was on my back. I'm like, you fucking me up, so I know the first opportunity I get, I gotta get with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. And that's just what it what it comes down to, man. But back to skin tight, he told me he's like, bro, you about to be 29, man. He's like George Jackson died at that age. You know what I'm saying? In prison. Man. Mm -hmm. A lot of dudes died at 29, man. It's like that's a powerful number. That's when you go through this the, the identity crisis. And I be, I'm doing that to the world. Like I want to do right. Mm -hmm. And now I got a baby boy that I just met when I came home. So how like, far man. are you into the bid where you kind of starting to think like that now, man? I mean, I always been a brother, like even all my homies, I always been somebody that was always a heavy thinker. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I feel like thinking people rule the day most. Oh, so. But eventually you do get released. Talk about real quick, run it all down. Your initial sentence and how, and then what? My that initial sentence was three, time. three in a day. And I turned three, three in a day to five years on one bed and five years to seven in one bed. So I did seven and a half mm -hmm. from altercations with viral gang members that even wrote, I don't want no charges, Prince, that they just had it out. They, they, they the DR beat the attempted murder out of, you know what I'm saying? They know where I am. They, they had Sean going. Like, it wasn't enough. You, you know what I'm saying? Did you get out with any probation or anything? I did. I got probation from the CO shit in okay. jail. You know what I'm saying? I did. got two and a half and three years probation. That's when I, I came home May 2020. I was back in 11 months. You did another interview. Yeah. You want to talk about that? When was that? Was that um, before you went back or was that after? No, that's when I just came out this time for my PV. Okay, my so we'll, we'll get to that then. Like, that's dope, man. Shout out M1, man. He made that happen. And it was basically about re entry. You know what I'm saying? I came home. My, my homeboy right here said I had $700 to my name. Mm -hmm. Spent that all in the hotel to be with my son, you feel me? Dope. And everything started coming together, but at one point it kind of felt like, 
It was like, damn, I, I got, I'm, you know what I'm saying? You trying to make it, you don't even know what you're doing. Cause I just went bailed out straight to the streets. You know what I'm saying? What's, now, yeah, what's the biggest adjustment going from the max to the streets? This is the second time. So it, it, this time was different because I had a baby that I haven't even met. He was born while I was in prison. So it's like, damn, I got a son now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got so much obstacles in my way. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't even know how to put it. Like, damn, you, you really start to see when they got a target and you feel that every day. Like, so if you could give your, uh, go back to that day you got out and just give yourself a little bit of advice, you know, knowing now, you know what I'm saying, what you know, you know how it always is. If I knew then what I knew now, like, what kind of advice would you give yourself? No bullshit. I, my, my, um, my man Cartier told me, he's like, yo, write a letter to yourself. And, and my man Coop from the 10 Man Free Coop. Right. Free cool. And he's like, yo, bro, write a letter to yourself. So my, when I wrapped up my, my seven and a half before I did my PV, I wrote my letter to myself like, yo, don't lose track. Don't let nobody lie to you. Don't let That's nobody fool you. The word out here, you know what I'm saying? I read that shit. Then the world hit me. Mm. COVID, everything yeah. shut down. Everybody's gangsters, everybody. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? You're meeting dudes on, on Facebook. And he's a, a federal, I'm not, I'm not pointing back there, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this dude right here, you know what I'm saying? Part of self, though. You got dudes from over here. One of, one of my close friends, he, he was a federal informant. This dude turned state and then you see... People were like everywhere, you like you just you know, understand it. It, it. was it was a lot. So I would go back and tell myself, man, just like I always tell myself now, just be patient with the process, even when it hurts. Mm -hmm. Even when you're getting desperate and you wanna get fast money, you wanna do something, fuck that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These people, you see flashing money on Instagram, these rappers talking about it killed a hundred people. That's to me, that's snitching. That shit is corny to me. Cause I would say I wasn't even home. Three months before the Ips tried to say I had a, I was shooting a music video and there was a, a prop weapon and they were like, oh, he had a gun. So, so I had a warrant for my wrist. Is this because of uh, parole? Uh, like, what, what well, the? Not because that's what the they gang to do work with the gang unit, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Yeah, I was on probation, so I, you know, they work with the gang unit in the local cities and gotcha. they want to, they want to know who's doing what mm -hmm. and what's what. So I mean, you're being like, even I tell my homeboys all the time, like, even this platform as being an artist, you know what I'm saying? I do music, we all do music yeah. for the most part. Yeah. And then it's like, that's that's a something that's not therapy, you know what I'm saying? Just like this is therapy. What you're yeah. doing and shedding light is that too many dudes can't relate to this shit. You know what I'm saying? Cause they're trying to imitate shit that they ain't even been through. So this pain of what we speaking is so deep that it's like, yeah, like it's powerful about yeah. that letter to yourself, writing that mm -hmm. down. It, it, I did that when I last time I was in. I went back in 2018. I got in a I got drunk. I got in a fight. I wrote a little paragraph just to remind myself, like, yo, anytime you're going through anything out there, just remember this place. Remember that you're better than this place, but remember that this place ain't going nowhere. It's right. always gonna be there waiting for you. And I don't mm -hmm. care how many Concords they close or how many jails they close, there's always a freaking bed waiting for yeah, you if you yeah. do something serious enough, mm -hmm. bro. So that's that, man. And um, this is like I say, this is the platform for for my people who come yeah, on. When you're my yeah. guest, this yeah. is your platform. If there's anything that you wanted to touch on, or any last words that you might have, mm -hmm. now's your chance to do that, bro. It's just you know, my last words, man. Shout out my son, man, my baby boy. First and foremost, everything I've been through, man. Um, man, shout out Doobie Lope, man, my my little brother, man. He's going up, man. Um. All my homeboys, Free Streets, BK, Nasty, Buns, Sport, Mass, <laughs> you feel me, T, um, even the ones, Colt, 40, like so many, I got so many dudes, if I didn't say free, you know I love you, man, free, free all y'all, man, keep the fucking fake the real, I mean, keep the fake and free the real, man, like, that's just what we doing all the way, man, like, and just know that this, this right here, this is a platform, I came on this right here, because I was even nervous to come on here, because I, just talking, you know what I'm saying? Out of like, it was kind of like, damn, I really want to do something positive, man, because that's just my energy, man. I'm 29 now, I'm about to be 30. And I, like, little dark shit, get out the streets, you touching 30, cuz, like, and you feel that, like, I just don't relate to this narrative, man. So, my little brother, I'm gonna introduce him, Quest, man, up and coming artist in Mass out of North Cambridge, finest, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, go ahead. Gang, go ahead, talk your shit, though, uh huh. <laughs> Then it's again, amazing how far like all of you like have, yeah. have come, man, and I'm super proud of everybody. Man. Real quick, sure. me, me and Cuz got a video coming soon, so I don't born freestyle. Mm -hmm. Boss for that, you heard? Okay, drop the on the social medias too. For, yeah, mean, let me, all y'all can run through it too. For like, me. let me, yeah, let me, let me get on the social media shit, man, so we can run this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> let me go over there. You know that gangland, walk.
French French, man. BK Nasty for the walkers, man. Free D Rock, Hot Box, all the homies, man, for that. Um, and you can follow me on IG at Chop City C H O P C X T Y, man. Super Cuz, man. New music coming soon. You know, free the homies, man. Yeah. More, one more time, yes, man. I know. I know you've been uh-huh. up there. What's up, man? More underscore B Z M O R T underscore B E A Z Y. We out with the stepping on tonight in Lawrence and tomorrow Pop out. Fall River. Mm-hmm. You already know, man. On the 16th, I'm headlining my own joint. We all out. Of war, 12 years all going out. 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 Yo, what's up? Go ahead. My man, right here. You hey, just hear the latest guest on the Go ahead. bounce back if you hey, haven't listen, seen that. Man. I ain't new to here. I've been here just, just last week. Yes, P. Go ahead. Uh, S-U-P-R-E-M, man, on all platforms. Man, listen, this is the coalition, man. You're going to see us a lot more. Like I said, I'm popping out to BZ tonight. Come pop out. I'm out there uh, February 9th, and then I'm going, going down February 3rd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Listen, we working out here. Working. Right? Let's get it. Find it. My man. Yeah, go ahead. Get your taxes done. Tap in. Tax season. Tax season. Go ahead. Get that tax season. Go ahead. What's that time of the year? Tap in. We're the financial and tax services.com. You need help with tax planning, tax mm-hmm. preparation. Mm-hmm. You got a business, you need accounting, payroll set up, mm-hmm. we got you. Let's do it, so, bro. Appreciate let's that. Go, let's go, man. Time, my let's let's go ahead. Be in the house. Big, big question for me. Uh-huh. Our quest on Instagram. We're looking at the most versatile walk. Uh huh. Okay, Two nine man. to the east, man. Go Yo, ahead. Salute to all of y'all, bro. I appreciate I'm you, man. Let me just get one more time. <clears throat> Close out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guys, this is the Bounce Back Podcast, man. Too many things. Everybody just, you know, said what they was at, you know, with the names, the social medias. I'm your boy, B. Luke. Make sure y'all tune into the Bounce Back Podcast. Yeah. Guys, it is what it is. What's next is what you make it. On that note, we out of here. Uh-huh. Peace. Hey,